Well, we can't wait for the awards today, and that's something that uh, you should really make an effort to get to, to uh, honour the champions of the season. Last year's was in the same place, the Silver uh, Ring, which is upstairs silver, on top of the Convention Centre. I think it's called. Yeah. It, it was absolutely outstanding. 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 The, the music, the guy doing Freddie Mercury. I forget Wonderful his name. entertainment. Wonderful entertainment. Um, you know, Graham Hawkins is always the best MC around. The best around. And um, it's great to be able to honour the champions of the KwaZulu Natal racing season. You know, absolutely. It's, it's, it really is. Try and get down there, 23rd yeah. of August. Yeah, and just get hold of Melanie. She'll be able to organise you. Um, we'll all be yeah. there. It's great fun. Great Something that we definitely can't miss. Um, <coughs> it was uh, good weeks uh, racing, but uh, we're going to just uh, do emails today because we've got a couple of very interesting emails that certainly need to be addressed, and we seldom find time to be able to do them. Um, we were going to have Bradford Smith on the show, but unfortunately he's not able to get here from Port St. John's this morning, and uh, we will do a recorded interview with him on Wednesday. Now, he's the course manager at Qatar. Okay. So, do you know Bradford Smith? Yes. Yeah. Mm. There's a jockey here. Yeah. I um, remember Bradford Smith very well. The, the so is, that, is that weird? I didn't realise he was in Qatar. Manager at Reinke's Fontaine, and apparently Qatar's got the best two tracks in the world. That's fantastic. Well, the best tra sand track and the best dirt track. Kudos added, to him. And the best grass track. So, um, Bradford, we'll hope to get an interview with him. Uh, we'll do it on Wednesday morning before racing. I'll have to speak to Sherwin and see if we can yeah, do it. Yeah, but it. we'll talk about our emails. But let's get into the sport. And do you Good want to sport. start with the Curry Cup? Yeah, the Sharks won. You know, I'm very pleased. It gives them a slim hope of qualifying. In the last minute. Last minute. And I thought the Bulls at six and a half point uh, in their favour was uh, a fair bet. And they came through. Yeah. And uh, uh, but then the, the international rugby opened people's eyes, James, because I saw firstly a friendly Ireland versus Eng uh, England versus Wales. Wales, Wales having won 14 in a row, was suddenly beaten by England at Twickenham. England were very good. They play, I think, a week later uh, in, uh, in Wales, oh, and might be, uh, be a different story. But uh, I thought the Springboks had beaten the Argentinians by 33 points. Is, Fair, fair dinkum, good stuff. And then the Australians, absolutely thumping all blacks. I know they had a player sent off, but that was at half time. They were behind. Yeah, uh, yeah I think that it changed the face of the game. You've got to, you've got to believe 14 against 15, and certainly when you use, lose a lock yeah. like um, uh, Scott Barrett. Yeah. Uh, how it looks soft to me the way he got sent off. I, I don't know. Yeah, they, they, that ruler, it came up three or four times during the, the week. We had uh, Burden sent off for the Sharks for doing the same thing. Not sent off 10 minutes, sorry, no. Sinbin. And it's, it's, if you had to go on the head coming in without your arms, it's, 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 as, you know it's that, as good that, as a punch, Jim. Okay, but what I, what, what I want to question, okay, is you see these guys cleaning out at the ruck. Yeah. Every time they're trying to clean out the, the opposition at the ruck, they take them out with their shoulders. Yeah. So it's the same thing, they basically, all do. They at all the do. whole time. Yeah. But now you get one guy penalised for doing it because he does Caught turn his the shoulder head. and yeah. got him on the head or whatever. And normally it's because the other player turns down. Like yes, that. that's, that's right. why he gets him on the, on the head. You're right. If, if you took every drop shoulder tackle, there'd been 10 send-offs a game. I agree with you. The, the, but they the, come in the clear out. You're right. It would be carnage. Absolutely. Absolute carnage as far as red cards are concerned. So that's something that... Um, uh, um, IRB have got to sort out and sort out quickly and I think that should be sorted out before the World Cup because it leaves this terrible grey area where people don't know you know how to clean out at the yeah. ruck. Where's the guy where the guy's head's going to be? Well the point is is that in a split second you come in to clean him out and he drops his shoulder. Or he's head in your way yeah. He drops his shoulder to get out of the way from you and his head now becomes a target. Yeah. Um, it's I, got to be addressed. I don't know if they're going to get the arms into it, but very good point, Jim. And, but it just opens up the rugby, James, because we, we, I'm very pleased for the South Africans. They're showing a lot of team spirits and they've surprised me. They've, they've surprised me. They haven't surprised me. No, but you're not surprised. You know why they haven't surprised me? Because we're now playing the best 15 players we can get on the park. And the, the eye opener to me is young junkies, Herschel junkies. Mm. I mean, that sniping break that he, he made. How good was, 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 was uh, Colby at scrum off? Fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Best sidestep in the game. But James, I'm, I'm very pleased because it opens it up for, uh, for, for the, the, the World Cup. I know? just feel sorry for coaches that have been and gone in the last five or six years 
You've had to work with quotas yes. and they've been hamstrung by not playing the best rugby players. Yeah. When you play the best rugby players, and there are a whole lot of overseas players yeah. in our side, we have got a fantastic team. We've and Razi Erasmus is a fantastic coach. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, well, we, 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 he's testful. His acid test will be the World Cup. Jim, he'll, have, not, he'll have some tricks up Do you know what I league. was surprised about? England threw in a lot of new players. The size of them, Jim. These guys are bulked up. You can't believe it. Dan Bigger came on as flyer for, for the Welsh. He looked like a lock. He was, I can't believe. These guys must spend hours in the gym. No, they do. They do. Sure. Like you and I. Yeah, Jim. I've got a six pack, but it's at the back of the fridge. Yeah, no, I've got a tank. <laughs> <laughs> that hides my six pack. You're in the aquarium. Okay, yeah, I've got a whole aquarium. Jim, but the, the big thing is the start of the soccer league, and I think it's important to we, we, we touch on the soccer because. Lot touch of, on it, we're going to talk about it in depth. A lot of, lot of the players, who, uh, guys in our show, are in the last one standing. And, uh, the oh, now, just show. talking about, let's talk about last one standing. This is a competition where you win two tickets to any game of yes. your choice. Yeah, it's, it's one air ticket, Jim. One air ticket. One air ticket to any game of your choice in the UK. Yeah. You're flown over, your hotel's paid and everything. If you can be the person who stays in, which means every week you put in 100 rand. For 100 yeah. rand, you could be gallivanting 50, 50 grand's worth of prize. But you every week have to pick a different team. Yeah. And you they can't have pick to win. a team you've picked already. They have to win. And they've got to win. They have to win. If you draw, you're out. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it's amazing how uh, the bragging rights... I've never got into top ten. Yeah. I've never got to... I've got, I've got close oh, I, I, I took four. <laughs> Try to get clever. I know some people take ten. They're gone in three weeks. Yeah. But so that's it. But it just shows, to James, of the season... How, just do, we, how do people get on it? We've got so many viewers out there. They're dying to get on this thing. Yeah, how, they, how do they get well, on? Well, they, they contact Budgie. Budgie? Where, yeah. Budgie runs it. Budgie Byrne? Budgie Byrne runs it all. He's our we, man. We do... Uh, the, the, and he runs it very well because he gives you, before updates. the game starts, every single player, every single pick, so that you know exactly who's on what teams. If anybody really wants to get on to contact you, because we'll put yeah. them straight into yeah, Budgie. No, perfect. But James, of the, the, the new league started, fantastic start to the league. The top six teams last year, five of them won, and the six couldn't win because it was beaten by an, uh, another top six team. But I thought uh, Liverpool started hesitantly, I thought. They got an own goal. They got a header where the guy didn't jump. They got uh, ricochet the land at Salah's feet, but they, they were the better side. Man City turned, turned up the screws. Spurs still look vulnerable to a team who parks the bus, but thank goodness they came through and won. And I thought at half time Chelsea should have been up. Yeah. There was no doubt in my mind. Chelsea should have been up against Man United. They did the woodwork twice, they'd missed chances, and uh, suddenly the penalty, the, the customary penalties, you know. Mm. And uh, your guys, your guys are good the, value. That, that fullback, is, is he new at Chelsea, the centre half, Zuma? Oh, he should be called Jacob, not Kurt. You know, he. Absolutely. He was at Stoke, he loaned out to Stoke, then he was loaned out to Everton a year later. So he's come from Everton, they can't buy players. So they've called back all their loanies. That's why you see Tammy up front, you see him there. And they played some wonderful football. They really passed the ball well, they're, they're away from home. They're going to have a good year or two. So. But uh, Man United will be cock a hoop. And I thought Pogba played completely in patches like a pirate, you know. As usual. Yeah, he was completely, he got caught in the ball a lot. Uh, but he gave that uh, the third goal was just a magical pass to show his, his That's prowess. what he does. Yeah. That's what he does. Yeah. But uh, it's going to be great. Uh, the leading goal scorers off the mark from your your uh, Obama Yang. A lovely. But, touch are we going to talk about Arsenal? Yeah, they won well. They played well. They played away oh. from home. They, they, I thought they were extremely lucky to win. They I don't know. Uh, twice, uh, the Newcastle should have scored two goals, uh, open was, goals uh, they missed. I think you've got a good team, James, and he, and he, he threw in a lot of players. Do you remember Ozil never travelled? Uh, and, and the other boy who was in the fight, they never travelled. They've got, they've, got, they've, got they've got a decent squad now. And, Where uh, was, was Sanchez for Man United? Is he not playing for them? I don't know what happened to him, Jimmy. He was the highest paid player a year ago and he sat, sits on the bench. I thought, he, I thought he'd make that team now the way, that, the way they play now. They've, they've shored up the defence. I think Maguire was outstanding. 
It's worth every penny of the money that they spent yeah. on them. They're still getting, uh, you know, still, people, they still got behind them quite easily. I thought, you know, uh, the left back's very good going forward, but he was suspect to the back. Well, uh, Lind got Lindelof's got a, a bit to learn, but they've got to be pleased. The opening no. game of the year, they won 4-0. Yeah. Puts them second on the log, or, or maybe first on the log. Yeah. So uh, no complaints for them. So it looks like a wonderful year, James. Okay, and your Arsenal solid well. Okay, if you have to pick the first four on mm. the log at the end of the season, remember, what, how would you pick them? Man City, yeah. Liverpool, Spurs, possibly Chelsea. Okay. And you? I would pick them Liverpool, Man City. Yeah. Uh, I can't go Arsenal. Awesome. I really would like that. I think you're very keen on your team. Give us your other two oh, teams, yeah. please. Give us your other two teams, Chelsea please. Yeah. would be my third team. Yeah. And then um, I think that uh, the fourth team might be Everton. Yeah. And see what you know. Game <laughs> might if, be if Everton will never finish at a Spurs. <laughs> okay, let's go talk horses, Jim. So, well, no, wait. We haven't Marky, finished Marky, sport. You haven't spoken about you your haven't cousin. Finished sport. I mean, did you watch the, the the playoff finals last night where Patrick Reed came through after being two back? He looked like he was in big, big trouble. John did Rahm, he win it? John Rahm had them stone cold at the turn. And I don't know what happened. He just hemorrhaged. Not like him. Yeah. And Patrick Reed got up to win. He was in front at the, at the he's, start he's of the game. He's a major game. winner, so he's oh, a very good it's player. It's now the playoffs. So next week there's 70 left, okay? Worst days and had a chance again, no guts, no glory. Yeah. You, know, you know, he just looked like he can he was thinking of his tractor at home. That's the problem. <laughs> okay. Um, what else uh, was Marky there? Marquez, tell me about the every, I never know the who I'm really guys. upset about Marky Marquez. He got beaten on the last bend. I mean, his main rival is a guy called Davizioso, who's a fantastic bike rider. And they fought it out for fifteen laps, one against the other. Chopping, changing, chopping, changing. They got the last bend. Marquez was in front. And Davizioso did the magic move up his inside. Got him. Um, I mean, it was just phenomenal. So Marquez riding. got beat. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. All yeah. Right, but don't worry about Marquez getting beat. You didn't mention Brad Binder, who's a South African rides in, rides in GP2. Yeah. He won. He must okay. be very good. He keeps He's running. a great rider. He, yeah. he was, won the championship in GP3. Moved to GP2. He's just trying to find his feet there. He'll be a, a, um, a motor GP rider, no doubt about that. Okay. okay. So we've now talked about... Um, a sport? All, Let's all, go to all our favourite sport, racing. Okay. Horses to follow. Let's have a look. Right, let's go and have a look at what we've got as far as uh, three horses to follow is concerned. And we kick off at the Vaal on Thursday at a work riders race, the first race on the card. Lucky Hudlakis knew it was Heinrich Rix's birthday. So I think he did a little extra work with this one. Let's see how it wins because it won in half a second slower time than the pinnacle. So this can run. Yeah. One by ten. Let's go and have a look at Wisteria Walk. Yeah, here's Wisteria Walk on the outside. They're ready at the 1200 and they sent on their way. A few were slow to begin. The lady is mine. Chloe's and uh, it gets rolling quickly. There's pace up there, begin. you know, uh, Britannia Captain's Queen, legacy Captain's was Legacy, quickly away. Shane so Speed. But this horse runs up to them away, very quickly. Mulangeni, you rides it for, for Lucky. Mulangeni. Yeah, Peter Mulangeni. Peter Mulangeni. And uh, here at the 800 gym, it's got one horse to shake off. The rest of them really can't keep up. Yeah, uh, look, I'm not sure there was that strong a field but the point is you've got to go on times and um, she bred by main chance uh, and she's out of a Fort Woodmare so she yeah. should be going a lot further than this um, but she absolutely canted home and he's looking around already Peter Malangeni and he just gives it the shake up and um, nice for Heinrich that he can go and have um, a, a James it puts two three lengths clear there puts another seven lengths clear of this field it must yeah, have really he, quickened he, up eh? he just showed it to stick then he actually looked left looked right no more to just get it, keep it running, uh, running on uh, make sure well done Lucky Lucky's a hell of a trainer I mean, he's a, and he's a good he's guy a good guy too. the Greek hang glider lucky yeah, yeah. Luck, uh, unlucky I call him <laughs> unlucky yeah. Yeah. Mambo, Constanza, Castlegate, and 
Well, there we go. That, <laughs> that was well worked out, well planned, probably been planning it for six months. Yeah. Give Heinrich a happy a birthday. birthday present. Yeah, well done to them. Um, we go to Kenilworth on Saturday and um, we pick up a horse called Captain Turk in the first race. Um, and there was big talk about Via Africa's brother, how good it was, the captain now. Well, I thought it looked a bit like Jimmy Abbott in the ring, and so it turned out to be. Um, there were excuses afterwards, but um, let's go and see how this was Captain Turk ran, and it ran an absolute cracker. Let's go and pick him up at the start. Yeah, here's Captain Turk here. Now, Captain Turk is slower length. You'll see it in the, the famous colors. It's at the back now. And halfway through the race, it's probably second last there. Halfway through the race, it's lost. They can't go through them. As they're quick and the speed's on, winter oasis. The favorite old bragger there is number three, uh, psychedelic down towards the inside. And the horse that we found, Captain Turk, Nat, it, it can't go with him. They're, they've all quickened away from it, and suddenly it's it's just not going to do anything. Well, if you have a look at that photo there, James, this you're is in the big last trouble. time you'll see it. And when they change camera, you won't see it again. Yes. And it, you can see it is almost out the picture so far back. It's by Karari out of an Al Mufti man, um, bred by La Plaisance and owned by Sabina Platner. And this, well, look at the first four. They're just in the picture, the first four. And and Captain Turk's nowhere to be seen. Watch where this finishes. Yeah, they find the nuts. Psychedelic. Greg Sheen looks like he's um, a statue. Yeah, this yeah. horse comes home Watch hard. Psychedelic's beating Bollinger. Look at this horse coming home. Wolf. There's a statue. Captain Turk, remember the name. Right, well, uh, those are two pretty impressive ones. Uh, we then go to um, the Honor Mission Syndicate. Uh, this is um, Matthew de Cox Syndicate. Uh, Mike de Kock trains him and ran in the first race at Turfentine on Saturday. Majestic Thunder. Well, here um, Calvin Habib won the race, an extremely good ride, and this horse was extremely unlucky. Majestic Thunder to run second. But the Honor Mission Syndicate, they've had a good week, weekend. They're very good. They're doing They're well for good. all their partners. There are lots of people they're bringing into They're on racing. a mission, eh? And um, this ran well. This is by uh, Mamba in Seattle, bred by Mouton's Hook. And uh, let's go and pick them up at the start. Yeah, here, the, the winner's easy to spot. It's a grey horse that shows plenty of speed. You'll see it in black and white colours. It looks like black and yellow colours. The grey horse, three, four off the right. The On a Mission Syndicate horse, which is called Majestic Thunder, is second last in the blue with the white sleeves. And they're trying to get in the race. And uh, as you said, Kelvin Habib's just relaxed this leader. And uh, it gets pressured early. What's you the know, leader's name, lad? Big upon. What's the leader's name? Snoop. Is Snoop? Oh, uh, uh, well, commentator called it Snoop. S Snoop. Oh, it's a S Snoop. Okay. Yeah. Well, S Snoop's leading, and uh, young uh, housemaster is trying to stay there, but now going out the back door, and uh, it's got a bit closer. Has uh, Majestic Thunder with Ryan Munger, and uh, here when uh, Snoop goes. The race is basically over. Snoop's got them cold, but don't forget the blue and white to its right. Suddenly gets uh, clear waters in front of it, and uh, look how close it gets. Yeah, runs on extremely well. He has to put his hand and stick down because the horse seems to be running out. He keeps looking in, which he shouldn't be doing. Um, he should just be riding for the line and um, just doesn't get there. Yeah. So that's a, that was a Pretty good, um, pretty good run. Pretty um, good effort. Be with Majestic Thunder. Well, he's out of a Thunder Gulch man. Um, yeah, lots to like about from. that pedigree. And uh, he probably improved quite a lot, you know. Mike de Cox's horses seem to improve, so let's have a look at him. Right, we're going to have a look at where are they now. This is Peter Gibson. Um, former CEO of Horse Racing South Africa, the umbrella company that uh, looked after quarantine, export development and various other things. Um, still running the South African Equine Trade Council, which is trading as Racing South Africa, obviously looking to bring in foreign investors and co contribute towards the export solution. And uh, I've got uh, opportunity as well to um, have imported a foreign horse feed, Connolly's Red Mills. We've got five products registered. Um, but of course, looking to contribute towards a solution for racing, 
improve the way in which we do our business and for the sustainability of the sport and I think now is the opportunity so we're all looking to make a, a better deal of racing and I think the opportunity exists now and so until next time. involved in horse racing in South Africa but have either moved away, immigrated or retired, we want to hear from you. Send us a short 30 second video recording on WhatsApp and we'll flight it on the show. Clips can be sent to either James on 071-588-5769 or Paul on 083-779-1311. We look forward to hearing from you. Well, thank you to Peter Gibson and uh, to all of you that send in these uh, little clips. Minute is all we need. Just uh, put it on a WhatsApp and send it through to either Paul or me and uh, we will get you on the show. Doesn't matter who you are or what you've done in racing, tell us where you are because yeah, that's what... That's uh, interesting. And Peter, Peter's now a director of Gold Circle as well, so he's, he's well established in the game. His heart's in the right place and let's hope... As he says, we can make a better deal of our racing. Well, he br brings in a good product too, good horse feed as well. That Colony's Red Mill is yeah, a very good horse feed. a very good product, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it was nice to have him on the show. He was at the Wild Coast with us and enjoys himself. And so, good fun. We're going to move on and have a look at the Plum of the Week. This is one you should have had the bet on. up to Torbenite. In the stars has got a beautiful split between them. Statute is looking to unwind. Got about two and a half to make up and Rocking Ruby. Rocking Ruby's on the grandstand side. Torbenite the inside. In the stars. Statute's running on late towards the inside. Rocking Ruby the last hundred. In the stars gets into it. In the stars exploding through and Statute's coming late. Torbenite in the stars from Torbenite. Star Vega and Statute in an absolute thriller. Well, this looked like the bet of the midweek meeting and uh, certainly a lot of confidence from the stable. The dryers were very confident this could win as long as she jumped and she missed a break, but she still was good enough. Five to two into bet. Uh, you could have got 18 to 10 if we were driving home. And, That's uh, right. 18 to 10 on into bet, 10. I think yeah. you got yeah. Dennis's stable's fantastic. turned nicely. This filly's won three of about seven or eight. She's got a very good three rank. Three of five. Yeah. That's what I yeah. meant. Yeah. I said that, didn't I? Yeah, yeah that's what and, you meant. Uh, I, uh, I know it's a useful filly. She'd been plagued by bad habits. It's at actually the three of six. Thank you, Jim. Okay. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but she's Jim, she's good and she's... These are the plums that you've got to pick up, but you've got to be on Interbet to be able to get the right price. So you can um, get hold of them and uh, open an account. Easy as one, two, three, and you'll find it's a wonderful Jim, betting just, site. just talking about it, the, uh, most, I'm on Interbet all the time. And I go and... Ten out of ten, you're getting better odds every race. Well, there's no, there's no doubt. Ten out of yeah, ten, I've yeah, seen it. Yeah. It's amazing, eh? Yeah, it's absolutely. Uh, you always go, and you know the latest hit. They're sponsoring Adam Marcus in Cape Town. They, yes. You know, I see a lot of bookmaking so businesses are getting involved. You will be next. You'll have Thank to you. speak to Gary. But Gary's, um, I say, I'll follow Gary on Facebook. Um, Where is he at the country? Well, him and um, him and Raul Berilovitz are having an eating competition as usual. You, you so they're traveling around the world. He's got a very nice shirt Gary yeah. wears for that advert. Yeah, yeah no, very good very shirt. Nice. Yeah. Good dresser. We might get to see that if we're lucky <laughs> this time. But, um, you know, we'll be back with Current Affairs. All right, Current Affairs. My name is Mark van Dierwendt. I'm a fanatic horse player, absolutely passionate about racing, because of the excitement of the puzzle 
and all the effort that goes into solving it. But it's a great spectacle too. The horses are going into the pens before the start of the race, the build up of tension, and then finding out which horse has it in them to come down in the final stages with just 100 meters left when they're gunning for the line, neck and neck. You never know really what's going to happen in the sport. That's part of the fascination of horse racing. But with Interbet, I know not only do I still get the best odds on their site, and it's also the most informative and user-friendly place for me to bet online. Interbet were the pioneers of online and Moby betting in South Africa, and they will continue to innovate and lead the way. Interbet, where the professionals bet. Yeah, there we go. Welcome to another session of uh, Current Affairs. Good to see Mark van Deventer. He's a knowledgeable guy. You know, seen his advert. Uh, he's a likable, great writer. Good for the game, that guy. Oh, yeah, and he's got great speed figures. You want to know about a horse, you speak, speak to, to Mark him. about yeah. speed figures. He'll tell you exactly what type of ability the horse has yeah. got. He's a so top man. He's, he's a guy you can use in this industry if you need to um, be more professional and very good at it. Just talking about the, um, uh, Magic Millions, you know the big news, we mentioned it last week, but those that didn't maybe see. Oh, Frankie. Frankie de Tori yes. is arriving at Magic Millions um, this year for the January sale. It's on the mm. 16th of January yeah. and well worth going to. Um, we think that we'll put together a little, a little party to go across there. It yeah. comes two weeks before the Met, so it fits in absolutely perfectly. Frankie will be there. Let's see what won from Australia. I think we've got a horse. Um, yes, uh, yeah. uh, Guthrie. The horse yeah. I know all yeah. too well by Sizzling. M maybe hey, where's we our can, graduate? We Have they got a graduate? graduate? There we are. There we are. We've got a graduate. Guthrie, nice big horse. I think he won uh, he down in uh, Fairview. Yeah, he's uh, um, well named. Yeah, Guthrie. Named after Angus Guthrie. Okay, all yeah. right. Okay. All well, right. there you go. That got well, used. The first the, time I've ever seen a, a mouthful of teeth Angus in my Guthrie. whole life. <laughs> Sounds like a beefcake. A great literary. Genius. Uh, no. Jim uh, sad the news that Joe Burns, big race Joe, passed away at 88. You know, he lost his son, Dave, who worked for me oh. probably six, eight months ago. You know, time flies. And uh, he passed away. He was called Big Race Joe Burns because he won many, many big races. I think he won just about every big race on the calendar. He had one feature about his riding, which most people who didn't know about him would not know. But do you know what it was? No, just very short, man. Yeah, but his left leg used to go in time with the horse. Used to go backwards and forwards. Okay. So he he was like an Australian with spurs, but only with the left leg. So when he was riding out of finish, the left leg used to go backwards and forwards. And the right leg? The right leg stayed still. <laughs> amazing, there you go. absolutely there amazing. You go. But his he used to, his leg leg used to go in time with the horse. He was a, a phenomenal rider phenomenal. and a really nice man. Loved yeah. horses. And a great guy to sit and chat to. Yeah. He, he can tell you a story. Uh, like he nobody. did. Uh, I saw him at Dave's funeral and spoke to him. Uh, I didn't realize how small he was, you yeah. know. But uh, big race a character. Big race Joe. Big race Joe. Uh, you know, the worst part about getting old is that you, that you know, you all your old friends go before you do and you just watch them all go. So really sad and uh, condolences to Bob and the family, you know. 
Yeah. Terrible. All right, Jim, let me just start with uh, some information I've got, and we'll get on to yours next. Uh, South Australia have now going to start running their two-year-olds only in November. The barrier trials in late October, they've just been given a boost in stake money, and they said they're making the decision. And the decision That's they say... Adelaide. Uh, South Australia. Yeah, that's right, yeah. down their way. And they, they're saying that uh, the decision is because they weren't filling their fields as well. The same thing that made us at Gold Circle push ours out. Because you remember in the old days, we had a New Year nursery. I remember Sun Monarch winning the New Year nursery. Correct. I was Peralta won the New Year nursery. That's right. Now, by, by that time, you know, it, 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 it's got what we'd record very early in the season. So we only got to get going in November. So, because... The rest of the country in Australia get going very early. Do you know what's happened in the horse racing industry? I'll tell you why they can't fill fields. Because basically this industry is run by big stables. And I mean really big stables. They're not like they used to be. In those days there were 40 or 50 horses. Um, the uh, trainers used to get in their horses from their yearlings. Their yearlings used to come straight into the stable, get broken in and get ready for racing. Now what happens is these big stables have got so many horses they haven't raced, they've just turned three, and they've got horses coming in the whole time. All the two-year-olds, or the baby, the yearlings from the sales, all go to spelling farms, and all sit on spelling farm for six months. Okay? That's true. So That's who true. wins all the baby races? It's not, not well, only in it's Durban. Sometimes it's a chance for the smaller yards to get rolling. Sure, Mike Miller is an expert. Master, you know? master. An absolute master. He gets him in early, gets going with him, and wins, wins the baby races. races. Yeah. But Quick I returns. believe that the way to change it is to, to say we're going to put on baby races from November, okay? Yeah. And those that win them, good luck to them. Yeah. The, you guys have got to get with the program. But the problem is, is that the stables are enormous today. Yeah, and you see it in Australia yards. too. Chris yeah, Waller and these guys, they just haven't got time to get their baby. Chris Waller's got 23 in the Cox Plate. Yeah. Jeez. How many in the Cox Plate? 23. How many nominated? 187, because Winx is not there. Oh, well, he's only got, um, you know. You see, with, with Winx not he's being there. He's only got eight, a, a ninth of the field. You see yeah. the Met, and Justin Snaith and Mike DeCock and yeah. Sean Terry have got ho more than half the field. Yeah. You know? Just talking about that, the, the absence of Winks at the cock plate now, James, 187 nominations, 23 are for Waller, 27 are from uh, overseas, including uh, uh, the two good, I wrote their names down there, the Derby winner, uh, Anthony van Dyke, and Latrobe. They're definitely coming into town. They're so, both from different stables. Yeah, they're from different stables. Oh. So those are coming into town, but uh, just goes to show uh, the strength of Chris Waller. And rightly so, he's a, he's a fantastic trainer. But as you say, the big yards have got the numbers there, Jim. Well, you, if you go, now talk about big yards, you go to um, the, a big race in, in uh, America was the, Ameri the Arlington Million over the weekend. Yeah. And Chad Brown won it again. Now, he becomes the winning most trainer ever to win the thing. Whittingham won the Arlington Million three times. Oh, so he's won that race the most. Yeah, and oh. Char Ronnie, Ronnie McNally, McNally, who was a yeah, great friend of mine, well. yeah. he won it three times as well. John Henry was his big horse, you know, yes. uh, and he had all those Argentine fillies yeah. that were champions as well. But um, the Chumpy Brown won it for the fourth time, okay, with a horse called Bricks and Mortar by Giants Causeway. Yeah. Now, Chad Brown... In 2010, no one knew about him. 2011, he got a couple of horses from England, put them on the turf, and his whole game changed. He became the turf champion, and he still is. Um, this was written by uh, Irad Ortiz, um, Bricks and Mortar, and it's going to Shaddai. You know who Shaddai is? No. The Japanese stallion farm, which had deep okay. impact, okay? Okay. He's going to stand there. Um, so that's most interesting. Um, Magic one ran second, the O'Brien runner. Mm. Um, what else can I tell you about, uh, about uh, the bricks and mortar? Well, the Arlington Million, he also won the Beverly D, yeah, Chad very Brown. Very good race. Very good. And uh, he won the other big race. He won all three big races on the day. So he's massive today. He's massive, Ch Chad Brown. And yeah. um, certainly, probably the best trainer in America. There, there was a Shogar Cup. Do you know about the Shogar Cup? Yeah, I know, a Shogar Cup. And uh, I, I saw an interview one of the girls gave. Yeah. And she was polite. And, uh, Hayley Turner won the silver saddle again for the yeah. leading rider. She's a good okay. rider. 
And the best ride was Mark Zara, which, who's an Australian. So Australians had an unbelievable weekend. They won the best ride of the Shergar Cup and they won the Beat the New Zealanders. Beat the New Zealanders. I mean, it's, 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 it should have a holiday. That yeah, no, there'll be a public yeah, holiday yeah. next year on that day. The rest of the world won the Shergar Cup um, and the other two tied, the ladies' team and the yeah. Great Britain Island team. That's very interesting that. And talking about Shergar Cup, what about the Saudi Cup, James? This new advert out about the Saudi Cup. What's that? Is it 20 million? Saudi Arabia, 20 million. Free nom? 29th of February. Free everything's free. They pay for everything. If you get a horse into the Saudi Cup and it's for horses rated 105 and above, well, with our, um, um, our crop uh, going up 10, yeah. it means that we've got 2,000 horses that can get into the <laughs> Saudi Cup. Must be, listen, for that type of money, they'll come from all over the world. It'll be the best of the best. Exactly. 2,000 meters okay. on the turf. Is it on turf, eh? I'm, I, actually, it might be on dirt. But it, I, I don't it fits know. right in between the Pegasus and the Dubai World Cup. If you've got a horse that can win all three, you win $41 million. Wow. Well, it's okay. called the, the Saudi Cup, I think yeah. they called it. Saudi Cup. Now, Bradford Smith, who we're chatting about, is the track manager there. Is it in Saudi, yeah. eh? Yeah, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Oh, He's the track oh, manager oh, there. I thought he was in Qatar. No, Qatar. Saudi Cup. Okay. Saudi Arabian Cup. Maybe well, he's from Qatar. Well, right, James, uh, and, and another horse that's had to retire is Too Darn Hot. Too yep. Darn Hot by Dubawi. Won six of nine races and uh, got a hairline fracture on his back leg. They've operated and it's going off to stud. And uh, Never missed the first three in its life, James. That oh, was a good horse, wasn't it? Good he? horse. The way he won the other day. Too Darn Hot. This Dubawi is sensational, Stallion. Yeah. yeah. King Kamakamiya, okay? Sounds uh, like a he song. died. He's by King Mambo. Uh, he was champion sire in um, Japan, so he died as well. Now, the interesting thing about this horse is that he was out of a mare called Manfath. Now, Manfath went to the cells in a broodmare cell and was sold for 4,200 guineas. That's okay? all? Yeah. She was then put in foal to... Her first foal um, was a horse called the Deputy, who won the Santa Anita Derby. Okay. She then was put in fold to King Mamba and sold for 650,000 guineas to um, Katsumi Yoshida, who's the Japanese. Who, He's a prophet. Yeah. So that was a good prophet. And he died, unfortunately. He is a sire. Who of died? Lord, the owner or the horse? No, King Kamakamiya. Oh, okay. okay. Now, he is the sire of Lord Kanaloa. Okay. Lord okay. Kanaloa is the yes. sire of Armand Ai who's probably okay. the best filly with an able sure, in the world. An able and Armand She's never lost, eh? She, she's a brute. No, she, she's lost. She won Armand Yeah. She won in Dubai. She won wow. in Dubai in a common wow. canter. She's Absolute a canter. Really brilliant filly. Yeah, brilliant filly. Jim, I've got some other news too that, uh, that shows you how quickly people can invest and grow in this game. Now, Equus, uh, they're, they're in Australia, and uh, Shane McGraw, my mate, is the CEO. The Chinese... Uh, that think, group? Yeah, their group. and uh, Aquas Farms, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And then they went, they took uh, Demi, Demi O'Byrne with them, yeah. and they went to the sales. Well, get a good story America. from him. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And they went to uh, America, their first foray into America, and they paid $1.5 million for a curling colt. I think it was joint top of the sale. And it's going to go to Todd Pletcher with the idea that it could go down under later. You know, and they said it's only a yearling, so they don't want to dream ahead. But I was going to tell you what they've spent. Now, they started, James, in 2015, just the other day, have spent $50 million. They now have 186 mares and 165 horses in racing. What does it cost them a month to keep that show running? I'm going to leave that to the maths boys. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But amazing that the, the, the new people in, in it and, and, and the investment is so... So uh, enormous. So big, well, yeah. Australia is absolutely flying. Yeah. Um, just talking about uh, fall crops, America's 2020 projected fall crop is the lowest since 1996. 20,500 they expect the fall crop to be, which is the lowest since 1996. Sure. What do you think the highest fall crop in America was ever? I don't know, Jim. Take a guess. 40. 51,000. 1986. 1986. When was that? That was Secretariat. That, yeah, was, well, in, uh, um, that was the year I worked in America. Ferdinand won the Derby. Mm. You know, sure. 
Okay, now the last thing was the Keenix Phoenix uh, Phoenix Keenan, Phoenix Keeneland Phoenix Stakes, okay, okay? Um, which was won by uh, uh, a first ascent defensive son Siskin, uh, owned by Khaled Abdullah, and he gave the horse to to Joe Lyons. Do you know Joe Lyons? Yeah, he Keegan yeah. Latham. Keegan wrote Latham for, for, for a long time. Yeah, now, the Irishman. Now. Um, and a beta an American pharaoh baby, a monarch of Egypt, okay? And Joe Lyons ended up winning another feature race uh, on the Sunday. So he's had a tremendous weekend and it just shows you, you've got to get the support. You've got to get the support. Yeah. Just talking about American pharaoh, I see Coolmore paid 950000 this week for American pharaoh. Yeah, well, it's big sales and um, they buy the big horses. They right, do. We're, go we're going to take a break and we'll be back with um, your call. Well, emails, we get a chance every now and again to do the emails, and uh, this week we've only got five. We don't get that many emails, and uh, it would be very interesting if you would write to us, uh, jamesg uh, at goldcircle.co.za, jamesg at goldcircle.co.za. Put in your emails, and you'll be able to have them aired on the thing. I'll start with this one from Peter R. Is the... Lyle Hewitson suspension going to be finalized before the end of the season? Well, this was obviously written before yes, that. Yeah. It was written in the beginning of July. And, um, and that's the first one we start with. Have you, uh, apparently enough, you got I mail as well. I a question about it. You yeah. know, the question I got, what was the reason for Lyle Hewitson being given uh, an extension to take up his suspension uh, at, after the season, but Muzi had to take his up... Uh, have the staffs given their reason? Well, I, I followed it up. I phoned up uh, Sean Parker, who's the chief staff in, in KZN, and I asked him, what was the story? He said, it's, uh, they each got three suspensions during the year and uh, for race interference, and they took them. They each took them all. The last one for Lyle Hewitson was where he put his hands down, and he appealed it. None of the first lots were that him and Muzi got were appealed. He appealed it. And he said there's a procedure there that they have to go through, and it is taking down the notes, printing it out, getting it to your lawyers, getting, uh, setting a date. And he said that is the reason. But he said it was handled by Johannesburg. He said it wasn't handled by him down here, but that was the reason. Was it, was it from here? Did it emanate no, from here? No, Port Elizabeth. Port Elizabeth. Port Elizabeth. And then it was, obviously, it was heard by the Port Elizabeth... Uh, heard in Joburg, I in believe. In Joburg. I believe okay. in Joburg, because uh, the appeals came, and uh, as we were saying, he's going to start that suspension, I think it's two weeks, has to be taken, and he's starting in, uh, in Hong Kong soon. So he's going to have to start it before then. That was Sean's take on it, but he said... It was handled in Johannesburg, but the difference between the, uh, the others when they, where they were, there's indiscretions was this was uh, dropping of the hands and appealed. Okay, it begs, begs the question, um, should something like this impact on the jockey's championship so hugely as it did eventually in the final playout, okay? Yes, yeah. Because it happened quite a long time before the end of That's the season. Right, yeah. And surely the NHA's job, okay, is to make sure these things get uh, handled Addressed efficiently yeah. and expediently. Impartially, yeah. quickly. I agree with you 100%, James. And uh, obviously it, it, it opened a can of worms. It upset Muzi no end. And it's... it's and it's, rightly so, I would have yeah, thought. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, if you absolutely. put yourself into his position, yes. you know, he, he's, he's he fighting for his first agreed, title. Okay? Yeah. He's tracing a championship. 
and uh, his opposition is not taking a suspension, which is going to give him maybe a jump of 10 winners on the guy. Two yeah, weeks suspension that, would give a... Yeah, uh, uh, and he got beaten by, uh, what, three or four? Something like that, yeah. So I, I agree with you, but the, the decision uh, was to put it out. Maybe you've got to have a situation, James, whereby you say, if you're a fine... Or, or, or you've gone into an inquiry and you've committed an offence as a rider, you have got two weeks tops to, just to cover your big race horses where you've got owners involved and you don't want to compromise an owner and say, sorry, you can't use yours in a uni this week. But if it's three weeks ahead, your norms are done and everything. They've got to look at something so that that fine or that uh, time off is taken within a certain period. Well, they'll, they'll turn around and say, uh, you know, if you're playing the devil's advocate, they'll turn around and say, well, we couldn't get a board together yeah. or whatever. That, those are the excuses that we get thrown the whole time. Once you I've, appeal, had, I've had enough problems in my time working with the NHA to understand that there's more moves in a can full of big, big bucket full of worms they've got, okay? So the situation is... The bottom, the put, bottom line must be put in place. The unless you appeal, line. unless you appeal, James, you've got to do it within. But a he, short he appealed, of. okay, yeah. and that's what happened. Is he appealed, and as a result of him appealing, he ended up in a situation where he was able to prolong it yeah. until the end of the season through no, through no fault of Muzi Yeni's and probably no fault of his own, but a fault yeah. of the powers that be. B, that's Surely right. the powers that's that right. be should be in a position. Well, it went to Johannesburg. I, I'm you know, shocked about it. Yeah, because it, 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 it impacts on a, a, a lot of people. Okay, oh. It impacts on our figures for the rest of, the, uh, of our life. It impacts on all those people that are around and both those jockeys. Agents. Oh, absolutely, James. I agree. I just, I just wanted to, to give you the, the feedback I got on it okay. and uh, from uh, Ashley pa uh, uh, Sean Parker. Sean Parker. Right. Well, let me just... Uh, I've got a long email here about um, sales, J James and Paul. I've always um, uh, wondered how buybacks um, are shown in sales figures. Do they... Uh, he goes on and on and on about this, and this is well, what's the grub? What's uh, the grub? Is is um, a lot of these horses are bought back by the vendors yeah. and then race under the vendor's name, but they're bought back under different yeah, well, names. Yeah, they're okay? allowed to in certain sales. But do they impact on the sales figures? What he's saying is that is that a if sale? it's bought back at four hundred thousand, that stallion is it a sale. It's a sale. James, okay. because some breeders want to qualify their horses for those races, and they don't. They think, well, I've got a horse here that's worth half a million. I'm not letting it go for four hundred thousand. So the figures, the figures of actual horses that can be that are sold on yeah, the market so. are skewed by horses. That well, might you, have you've been, got a chance. You might not have changed ownership, and money might not have. Changed. What about reserves? You put a reserve on, yeah. and uh, your reserves half a million. They stop at three hundred. Three hundred doesn't get other figures. It's not sold. But when they're bought back. If you if, if just say you James, you've got a situation where you've got a new stallion, a brand new stallion's come at the game, and you think, "Wow, I'm very impressed with these horses. I'm not letting, letting them go cheaply." But the public don't know much about the stallions, and they value them at two, three hundred thousand. You want you want to buy if you buying them back, you put in your five hundred thousand on each of them, so that it impacts well for you as having sold horses for the this new stallion. I think that's sold. the question. Yeah. yeah, yeah, impacts well for you, but does it? Does it show the true figures? Okay, that's what it seems well, to be Well, if, if, if a guy's going to buy it back, it's, that's what he thinks it's worth. Yeah, and obviously he's got to pay the commission on the buyback. Absolutely. If you pay, buy, buy a horse back, you've got to pay the commission. Yeah. And the commissions are onerous, 7 8%. Um, so, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of money to be spent there. I've got another one here, James, that's it's quite an interesting one as well. You know, I've, uh, I've filtered through a few of them and then... Talking about the Equus Awards, in a nutshell, the Equus Awards is, is uh, they want to know that who will win the two-year-old Colt of the Year? Now, it, it's coming up soon, the Equus Awards, this week or something, whatever it is. Is it going to be Got the Green Light or is it going to be Eden Rock? And they want to know is the criteria that Eden Rock won the, the medallion and, and, and got the green light ran fourth in the group one. Then Eden Rock went for the two group two and won it comfortably. And then yeah, but Got the Green Light never ran that. Never ran there, I'll qualify yeah. that. And then in the last race, Got the Green Light beat, beat Eden Rock by six lengths. Does, he's saying, does the criteria say, well, Eden Rock's won a group one and a group two, 
Or do you just look at it and say, maybe you got the green lights a better okay, horse? Okay, I'll tell you my take on it. My sure. take on it is simple. The best horse, best two-year-old to race should get the award. Okay? Yes, yes. Now, the best two-year-old to race over 1,200 looked like Eden Rock and even 1,400. Okay? Yes. Then they came to a mile, got the green light, beat him comprehensively. 6.6. And six, group, yeah. group one as well. So you've got to then in your mind as the panel say, which is the best two-year-old? Okay, well, the other one might be the best two-year-old over 1,200 or 1,400. And this one might be the best two-year-old over a mile. Um, a mile. In order that you don't get egg on your face, you need to pick out the horse that's going to be the best racehorse. You have to make okay. your call, yeah. So who would be the best racehorse in your opinion? And I'll tell you how this impacts on, on this thing because it happened with me, okay? I won the OXA award with Gold Tax. Who do you think was a two-year-old in Gold Tax this year? Horse Chestnut. Horse Chestnut, yeah. the best horse in South Africa, yeah. was a two-year-old, okay? And he was nominated. He only ran twice. Yeah, no, I, I agree. You, you, you've got to look at it. It's, it. it's a call where if you don't contest a race and another horse wins, it doesn't get like the group two I'm, I'm talking about. Because we won the Equus Teal Awards with Harry's son. Yeah. We found horrible trouble in the medallion and ran third. Then we got horribly taken out, in the, uh, which was a group one. That Group two now used to be yeah, group one. On July And day. then we won the last one. They said, well, this horse is the, is the consistent horse and the right horse. So I don't know if they take it over 1,200 or if they take it over a mile. Uh, they're, 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 there's a panel. There's a it's, panel. Always, it's always interesting, and it's always a matter of who says what in the panel discussion, okay? And the, the guy who's got the most pull and the most forceful in the, the panel voice. discussion ends up when the loudest yeah. voice. You like that show? Very good show. Yeah. Very good yeah. show. Listen, we haven't got much time. Okay, so then, got? I've only got one more, James. Yeah. Quick one. And the, the guy here says, why would Mark de Kock apply for boxers in Australia for him and his son, basically? Okay, I'll tell you, um, if I had a young son who was as involved in the industry as Matthew is, I think Australia is a natural progression. Um, I think Australia is thrilled to have a guy like Mike de Kock applying for boxers. We have trainers in Australia who are South African who have done really, really well, been a credit to us. South Africans are a credit to Australian society. There's no doubt about that. They definitely lift um, mm. um, well, pedigrees. What, what, the question is, what, what would make him do that? Just, I, know, well, I know for his son. You know, you, you know, but he he's going to have a satellite job. He had the worst incident you can possibly imagine with his workers with, when with they the attacked him. Yeah. Okay? And he's the best payer of um, the, the workers probably in the world, pro rata. Okay? He looks after people unbelievably. He's taken uh, grooms to Dubai and made them into millionaires. Okay? He, never, he could have got workers in Dubai. He didn't have to take grooms from here. There's plenty of workers yeah. in Dubai that you could have got. He f fed them, paid for them, put them is, up, is, gave is, them accommodation. Is it, uh, enough is enough? Yeah, well, I think that the point is Mike is in his 50s, okay? Matthew's in his 30s, okay? Late 20s, 30s. Where is he going to go? This country doesn't look great, okay? Yeah. Things are not looking so, fun, so rosy. So... Australia, he's got um, the, the shadow operation in Australia that they buy horses from and yeah. bring here. Yeah. He sees the export market opening up in I know South he Africa. Does. Yeah, yeah. And as a result, this would be a wonderful nursery to take horses to Australia. I'm telling you, we would, he'd Fabulous. be the best staying trainer in Australia that they've ever seen. Yeah. They've had Tommy Smith and they had Bart Cummings. Mike DeCock will play them all, I'm telling you. So. The point is, that's where he might want to go. Okay, well, that's you know? good. Have you got any and more I, questions? And I, I agree I with you. To, I agree with you. Yeah, South Africans like the weather, you know. Yeah, <laughs> England's, the, England's, a, England's a bit cold. Yeah, a bit seasonal cold. Seasonal and cold. Yeah. I got one final one. And, okay, and it's, Jim. Uh, who's this guy who wrote this thing? Yanni uh, van Deventer. Uh, beautiful. I really enjoyed listening to Jeff Lloyd on your show. He seems so sincere and a real hard worker. Give him my best regards. I backed Wolfpower in all the races he won and paid for my kids' schooling. Thank you. <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, there's uh, a guy. Uh, there's really a guy acknowledges it. Yeah. Yeah. He, inter he loved the interview with uh, Jeff Lloyd. It obviously pulled a string or two with him, and uh, he he. he I'm, I'm so pleased for his success, Yanni van Deventer, because he's done well. You must remember there are people who, 
whose kids haven't gone to private schools because their dads are such bad punters. <laughs> They've only got to state schools. Well, it shows you back yeah. Jeff Lloyd and you back end Jeff up Lloyd, winning you everything. Put, yeah. You can put, it, yeah. put your money down. But Jeff is just that type of guy. Yeah. He's just, and, and his interview came through, James. Yeah, well, that, that's the, and, and we're so lucky to have been able to do the interview and um, have him on our show, and hopefully we keep getting people of that sort of ilk on the there's show. There's a sale this week, James, just before you close up. Yeah, there's the two-year-old two, sale. Two-year-old yeah. sale. Are you buying? Yeah. No. No. Uh, <laughs> not, buy, not buying me one? Joking. Yeah, yeah. we're going to laugh. Okay. <laughs> At the end of the day, I've got more than enough horses still, and uh, I'm trying to get out of the um, owning of horses. Okay. Uh, but keep getting, people keep getting me involved. What is going on? Lap, anyway. You're a good guy. I think That's that all. there's lots of people that um, feel the same, but you know what? We love the business, and we keep getting involved. Until next week, where hopefully we've got an interview with Bradford Smith, and you have a great week's racing.